all of us like music. That was the initial the initial start to it. All of us love music and we love messing about with music, even if it was just I don't know, like just pausing it and adding another song in the background and like, oh, that sounds cool, or like something like that. I feel a little disconnected. Nothing but a but like initially I suppose like another way how I got into it was I used to have parties in my carriage uh, like every weekend um, so I was always on like on the music not that I was on the deck I didn't have decks at the time but I was always on you know on, like on the music you know cueing the tunes or whatever DJing initially came from um, one of my cousin's mates called um, Marsh, who's also a, he's a house DJ, which is a lot of the, a lot of the stuff I mix now. Um, and I started playing around on the decks with him, at, like a couple of family parties that he used to do family parties and things like that. And then from there, like someone was like, "Oh, I think you should get you should get decks. Like that'd be sick. Like you could play, you could get your music on the decks, and then back around with it, kind of thing." While, while at a party, I was like, "That's a great idea." I mean, the the skills are taking long. The skills are still um, still improving. They always will be improving. I'll, I'll never s stop get getting better. I hope, like you know, even when I'm like 40, I'll be like, "Ooh, I'm still doing this. But I mean, like, it, I mean, in, in regards to like, the next five years, I mean, I, I like to look closer than that. Probably like the next year. So like the next year I'm gonna hopefully like be DJing in like a club and then like move maybe another couple of years in a festival. Something like that. That that would be the, the dream kind of thing. Like DJing like a massive festival. I think ours is a music podcast and Sometimes the arts and specifically music in this case do get underappreciated and in Liverpool it's a massive part of the culture of the city. It's like, like in the time during lockdown where you couldn't go out, you couldn't go to the booze and that, but we were still allowed to record podcasts, weren't we? So that was like our, our escape, do you know what I mean? This is what this is for me, an escape from like being sat there like feeling feeling low and that way it was like but the relationship's boss, and I, I, do you know what I mean? I do really appreciate like what Luke does for the podcast and that. Um, to be honest, in school we never really spoke. Like as Luke said before, we met through a mutual mate, so we just sort of bonded through our love of music and football. So um, it just started from there, and then in, in school I was quite shy, mate. So if someone would have said to me when I was fifteen, I'd be doing a podcast. No, I, I really wouldn't expect that. We then moved to a studio, and at first that was a bit daunting, I'd say, and then we've grew into it, especially since coming to Big Condo, and it's like, all the bands we've met, they're all sound boxers, fighters, and like, people like Shit Indy, and stuff like that, they're all really lovely people, and I would have never met all them people if it weren't for the podcast, so I feel, feel quite proud of it. We don't really, you can't really have a set ambition, because we're not Joe Rogan, and we wouldn't like to say we're like that because we're nowhere near as good as that. And, or like true Geordie, but I don't know, broadcasting's one of them because I think you've got to be a bit too filtered with broadcasting and that's probably why we enjoy listening to podcasts and making them because you can say basically what you want, obviously within reason, but if anyone wants to offer us anything like <laughs> I've always been loud. Um, in school, uh, I never used to sing on it, and I, like, I only started doing it in like year 13, so last year the sixth form. Um, but you know, in, in, in sixth form, I got given like this award, not sixth form, in prom, year, year 11, and given this like award, most impulsive singer. I never used to sing, I used to just scream at people. Like, oh, I don't know, I think I've always had the confidence to not like, be bothered. And then it comes to, yeah, I was in sixth, um, sixth form and I had drag lessons, which is a very good, like, and I wouldn't go. Um, I was meant to be in travel, but I'd just go to the music, play yeah. guitar. And then in the end, I think it was because I was playing guitar that much, and I didn't really sing. I thought, oh, I can sing and play at the same time. Yeah. And then I got, got into it then, and I was enjoying it more. After sixth form was finished, I went to LMA to do music. And then I think from there, I started to like think, oh yeah, I'll try and do this as a career. Now. And then I messaged Chris, and then it's went off since then. Like, I have had people go like, oh, I started guitar, and that, because I watch you, and then do, like, you do guitar and stuff, and play guitar, singing, and that. 
Because most people don't play guitar no more. Like, I know, I know like, most of my mates start and they just give up. And they listen to like, Dave and stuff. Whereas now it's like no one listens to guitar music. So that's, that's, a good, that's one thing. I'd like to like, get more people to learn guitar. And, uh... I said to Chris the other day, like, I, I always say to you, don't I? Like, um, what do we do now? What do we do now? He just, he just says, take your time. Release your music, promoting it, do gigs, and try and do that in order, and then release an EP or an album. Just do things as it comes, and not force it too much. Because I don't want to be worrying about like, where I can be in the next two, three years, when I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. If I can get to the point where I'm headlining in Glastonbury, it'd be unbelievable. Like, yeah, but I want to be like that, I want, I want it to be like that, but just take it as it goes, each step. Um, I've been playing basketball uh, since I was like 10, so that's about nine years now. I first got into it um, because of like a video game that my mate had, and um, I just I just really liked it. It really interested me, and so I went and bought my own game. But um, at my school, they didn't really have like a club, so I had to play netball first, to be honest, which is a bit funny. But, uh, yeah, I, I would have wanted to like. I, was, I had a set of goal to dunk by year 11 and uh, be good enough to like move to America on a scholarship potentially. But I know that takes a lot of work and then the ultimate goal was to go pro. But um, me now, it's more about just having fun with it, meeting new people. It's like an outlet to like break up my week. Coaching interests me as well. I mean, I've done like a referee course. I, I'm planning on doing a coaching course. I think if I was to make it, it would show that if you really put your mind to something and work hard and like you dedicate your life to it, you can succeed in something you want to do. Um, my role models in the sport, um, Stephen Curry, because literally I'm his size. I'm like, I'm a bit lighter, but I'm 6'3", and he's playing in a league full of giants, like where the average height is 6'7", like, and because of how elite he is at shooting, and how hard he's worked throughout his whole life, he's become like one of the best players ever. And I just think that's like so like respectable. I fully clicked with the sport when um, I must have been about 12, 11, 12, um, watching Kobe Bryant highlights. I was just in awe of how like um, skilled he was and like his dedication to his craft and how like he approached every day. It was a bit like um, insane how hard he worked, but the end results of how skilled he was just made, just made me click with the sport. I wanted to be like him. It's about actually actively trying to not be afraid to just go for it, take that leap. Um, like with the coaching as well. I mean, I'll have an opportunity at some point with the club that I'm at if I stay with them. And um, it's about giving back as well. Like that club's been great to me. It's given me an outlet to play. And um, there's a new generation of kids coming up who will probably thinking the same of me, same as me, who will be better than me, you know what I mean? And um, if they see someone who's like worked hard, not necessarily made it, but still enjoys it, who's playing, I feel like I could be a good inspiration in that way. <laughs>